you have your Bibles, turn to uh, Psalm 25. Psalm 25. I want to share with you uh, just a devotion here uh, about trusting God. Uh, when Tony asked me, I, I, I knew, you know, that he was a man of prayer. Uh, one of the things he does uh, is during our prayer time and our just after, you know, our welcoming and all that, uh, he comes in, to the altar and pray. And uh, I had the same confidence that you had that God was going to give you a job. There was never a doubt in my mind about that. Uh, it was just a matter of when. And I want to share that with you tonight. That's one of the issues uh, that we're going to be talking about. So let me give you the outline. It's there on your paper if you picked one up there at the back. Number one, God knows your need. Okay? God knows your need. Uh, he, uh, he, he sees everything. He knows everything. Uh, and uh, he knows your need. Number two, God tests your faith. Folks, I believe everybody goes through a time of testing. I really do. I, I don't think any Christian is exempt from a time of testing. And we'll talk about that. And then the third thing, God delivers his children. Okay, he delivers his children. So look, look at Psalms uh, 25 verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Folks, we trusted in Christ at the point of salvation but that trust, you know, it's not a one-time deal. We, we just keep trusting and keep trusting. Uh, and these days, you know, used to, you could trust people with a handshake, uh, you know, and so many things have changed now. But I'm telling you, uh, you can trust God. God's word is true. If God's word says it, uh, you can believe it and trust in him. Let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over me. And again, when I think of enemies, you have to remember, folks, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So many times we make it personal with a person. Okay, uh, you know, this person did this, all right? But our enemy is Satan, okay? He doesn't want us to trust God. He doesn't want us to be at peace with things. He doesn't want us, uh, you know, uh, praying and, and doing the things. So always remember, it, even people, I know there are people, uh, it can be a boss, it can be a person uh, that you work with, it can be uh, somebody that is just, you know, loud and boisterous, and, but that, that person is not your problem, folks. It is Satan, okay? Satan is the one. Uh, that influences these folks. Verse 3, indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. You'll find in these first uh, five verses, there are two, the two times he uses the word wait. And I'm telling you, when you think about waiting, uh, there's been all kinds of, of Bible characters that had to wait. And I truly believe of the fruits of the Spirit, patience is the last one that we master. All right, because we live in this quick, fast society. All right, I can have, you know, a coffee, instant coffee in a minute. I can have instant oatmeal in two and a half minutes. I can have popcorn in three minutes. We're just used to it going like that. But when it comes to God's things, uh, and, and it's the lessons that he's trying to teach us, just your example of mercy, okay, a lot of times he just makes us wait. It's not that God doesn't hear us, and it's sure not that God doesn't care. He is building patience in you. He is giving you wisdom through those things. Let those uh, be ashamed who deal treacherously without a cause. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation on you I wait all the day long. Folks, God has a perfect will for your life. And while uh, we have detours, while we have bumps in the roads, all right, he is always up to something. He is, he is uh, you know, uh, helping us through these situations in life that we have. And when I think of 
you know, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine someone just walking in and saying, hey, we no longer need you. All right. That 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 is, you know, that that is something that that is hard to deal with. But I think of Philippians chapter four, uh, verse 19. We don't have to turn there, but you know the verse. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Folks, God knows what you need. All right. And for this moment in your life, Tony, that, I mean, he gave you exactly what you needed, all right? Even though you had to wait, you had to wait a month, okay? He gave you what you need, so uh, we just praise God for that. Not only do, does God know your need, God tests your faith. And I love this quote. I don't, honestly don't remember. It might have been Warren Wiersbe that it says, a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted, okay? We all have our faith tested. Everyone here could come up here and testify that, hey, my faith has been tested and then give the example there and in, in what has happened in your own life. So let's look at verse 6. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth nor my transgressions, According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. And I think of Job, and there are times when you go through these times of testing. I've even heard Christians say, what did you do to God? How did you make God mad? Well, folks, that's not always the case, all right? Many times that is not the case, all right? It's kind of like Job. You know, when Job had all that stuff going on, his own wife says, if I were you, I'd just curse God and die. That is not good advice, okay? I mean, God, and, and I truly believe no man, no man went through more things than Job did, all right? You know the story. You know Job chapter 1, but yet it was just a time of the testing of his faith. Look at faith. Look at verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way, and the humble he guides in justice. Folks, I believe with all my heart, we all need more humility in our lives. We need to come before God uh, humble. We need to be in awe of God. All right? And I understand being confident. All right? I'm, I'm all for confidence, all right? But our society really pushes arrogance. And, and God, I, he, he does not like the sin of pride. Uh, he does not like, you know, uh, us, you know, thinking that we can fix this. There are some times in our lives that we can't fix what's going on. And that's truly when we must humble ourselves, we must trust God, and we must wait on God. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimony. And folks, God's word is full of promises, and that one of those promises, he will take care of us. And so through all this, through these times of testing of your faith, we need to keep trusting him. Because you think of the goodness of God, and the other thing you have to remember, God's character, okay? God cares for you. God wants the best for you. Uh, God is merciful to us. Uh, God is kind. God is gentle. And, and again, all those things, he is. Verse 11, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. 1 Corinthians 10. I like this verse, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And again, folks, it's talking about humility there, all right? Humility. No temptation has overtaken you, uh, such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And folks, in much of the writing, in 
you know, you can put test there or temptation there, all right? And there's the difference. Satan tempts you, God tests you. And through all that, what this verse is saying, he's not going to give you more than you can handle, okay? There are times that I hear, you know, even in counseling and talking with people, I, I hear people say, I just don't think I can keep on going. I don't think I can handle this. And I keep assuring them that you can handle this, all right? You can with God's help, with God's strength. See, he has strength that we don't have. He has that. And we need to keep trusting him, especially during these times of testing. You know, I just thought of a scripture. We don't, I, I didn't put it on your deal, but go to, go to James 1 real quick. It's just popped into my mind, or I would have put it on the paper. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. See, that's how we get patience, is through the testing of our faith. And folks, I'm telling you, God is faithful. God is faithful. But let patience have its perfect work. What is he talking about? It's working in you. That's why God tests you, okay, to give you his attributes. Think about God. Let me ask you this question. Is God patient? Sure he is, okay? And if he's patient with us, folks, we need to be patient Also, But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. And again, he's not saying sinless perfection. He's talking about being mature in Christ. He's talking about waiting on the Lord. Complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally liberally to all without approach and it will be given unto him. So folks... I'm just telling you, God will test you. He will test you, but you can trust him through those times of testing. So we see God knows your need. God tests your faith. Then the last thing, God delivers his children. Verse 12, who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach the way he chooses. And folks, here's where the trust comes in, all right? God is always on time. God always has a reason and a purpose for what he is doing. And and it teaches us patience. As Tony testified, you know, his deal was mercy. God, God taught him that. And folks, when you have to have mercy, you see things in a different view. What a wonderful testimony. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful, you know, enlightenment, a change uh, that happened in his life. Verse 13, he himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. And and here's the key. Look in verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And you say, God has secrets? No, but he does whisper things to us. All right? He kept telling you, Tony, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And folks... Fear is respect, okay? Fear is being in all of God. Fear is knowing, all right? And and again, folks, I do not fear Satan. I'm telling you right now, all right? I know he's powerful. I I know, you know, I understand all of that. But fearing the Lord cancels Satan's fear. We should not fear uh, in our lives. I, I like the word, God's got this. Okay, he's got it, no matter what is going on in our lives. And he will show them his covenant. Uh, My eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Maybe Satan will throw a net over you. Maybe he'll he'll, he'll do that. But folks, I'm telling you, God will uh, rescue you. God will get you out of that net. Verse 16, turn yourself to me and have mercy on me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. 
Look on my affliction and my pain and forgive my sins. Consider the enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel and hatred. Verse 20, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Folks, I'm telling you, no matter what you do in life, no matter what goes on in your life, you need to keep trusting in God. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. You know, the thing that we have the hardest time with is God's timing, our timing versus God's timing. Folks, I got news for you. God doesn't carry a watch, okay? He created time. He knows what time it is. He knows what you need. And part of, of maturing in Christ is having that patience and, be, and being able to wait. One last scripture. One last scripture. Turn with me to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. I know you know this, but I just want to use this as a reminder. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Folks, I'm telling you, no matter what's going on in your life, just keep trusting God. The Bible tells us that he will never leave us or forsake us. The Bible tells us that he is there 24-7, all right? And, and instead of worrying, there are just so many people that worry. And folks, worry doesn't change anything. We need to change that worry and exchange that for prayer. I'm still going through a book, Ronnie Floyd's book on prayer, and it really is a good book. And I have just learned that I need to be praying about everything. There's some things I, I, I had mistaken and thought, well, maybe, maybe it's not that big a deal to God. Maybe it's not that big a deal. Maybe I, you know, maybe I shouldn't bother God with that. But folks, he cares about you deeply. He hears every one of your prayers. And this, Tony said earlier, prayer changes things. And you know what else prayer gives you? Prayer gives you the peace of God in your life. Just think about prayer. Think about a quiet time. That is, that's that time that you have in fellowship with God, listening, all right, talking to him, sharing your burdens with him, sharing your prayer requests with him, and that intimate fellowship with God, that time of prayer takes that worry away and brings that peace in your life. Father, thank you for this night, and thank you so much for Tony, and Lord, just his uh, testimony tonight. God, I thank you that uh, you did, Lord. You, you took him through a time of testing. And God, I thank you that uh, you provided for him. Lord, a Christian boss, uh, not just being over the IT part, but a director, Lord. And God, that's, that's what I, I just see, God. You, you, you're always there, God. You, you want even more than, than we can even think or even ask sometimes for. So, God, thank you for answered prayer. And, God, I just pray that we as Christians uh, would just uh, be men and women of prayer. Uh, God, I know we all pray. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But, God, I pray that our prayers uh, would be more intense. I pray our prayers would be more persistent. God, I pray our prayers would be heartfelt. I pray we would even burden pray, have burden for lost souls and burden for people who are hurting. And God, I pray uh, for the sick, Lord. Uh, we can be interceders and intercessory prayer warriors for the sick, which is what we're going to do here in just a minute. Uh, so God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. And God, thank you for working in Tony's life and his family's life. Thank you that you brought uh, them to our church. And God, I just know they have already been a blessing and God, thank you for all of our faithful church members. Uh, God, we got so many people that just love you, uh, that just want to serve you, just want to worship together. 
And God, thank you for this past Sunday. What a glorious day it was. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.